Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about Armour Thyroid, and I'm going to be talking about 10 things that I think you should know, preferably before you start taking this medication. But even if you're already taking it, I think you'll find these 10 things to be very helpful. So let's get out the whiteboard here, and we'll be talking about it. So first of all, the one thing that I want you to know is that Armour Thyroid is not the only NDT medication. All right, so remember, NDT stands for Natural Desiccated Thyroid, and it's really a class of medications, which includes things like Armour Thyroid, which is the most well-known, but it also includes NP Thyroid, WP Thyroid, Nature Thyroid, and so on. So there's a lot of different types of NDT that you should be aware of. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because most people are aware of it, but it doesn't make it the best formulation of NDT. So if you're using Armour Thyroid, or if you started to take Armour Thyroid, or if you're even thinking about it, it's worth looking into the other types and brands of NDT because each of them has its pros and cons, okay? And so what I'll see a lot of people do is they'll start on Armour Thyroid. They won't feel as good as they want to or as well as they think they should be feeling because they probably have heard stories about people switching from T4 to NDT and they feel great. And so they're like, well, what gives? Well, what gives is that maybe you're on the right class of medications, but on the wrong type of medication. So type, I mean brand name versus versus the other types. So consider that even if you're taking Armour Thyroid, it's not the only one and you might benefit from just switching to Nature Thyroid or to NP Thyroid or so on because they all differ just a little bit. So don't forget that one. So number two is Armour Thyroid hands down is better for weight loss than, than other thyroid medications. So I wouldn't call it the best medication for, or the best thyroid medication for weight loss, but it is hands down better than T4 medications such as level thyroxine and Synthroid. This isn't even an arguable statement. Like we've seen clinical studies and medical research studies which show this. They compare people that take Armour Thyroid, they compare people that take T4, they look at their weight loss and they compare and they always, almost always show, I haven't even seen one that, that hasn't shown this, they show that those people who take Armour Thyroid lose weight. What's even more impressive is that the people who take Armour Thyroid, they don't do anything for their weight loss. They just simply switch medications and then they start to lose weight naturally. And in my opinion, this is because it helps to, it has a little bit different ingredients, which we'll talk about, but also it actually finally gives you the thyroid hormone that your body's been needing for a long time, probably. So hands down better for weight loss, but remember not the best, not the single best thyroid medication for weight loss. I'll make a different video on that, um, but definitely better than Levo and or Synthroid. Number three, you should also be aware that it is the most expensive formulation of NDT. All right, so remember I said it's not the only one, but there are a bunch of other ones. And so just look at this for, for as a difference in price. So a month supply of Armour Thyroid will cost you around $30 if you're paying the cash pay price. Now I'll tell you this too, insurance companies hate to cover um, Armour Thyroid. I don't know why, they just really dislike covering Armour Thyroid. They really want you to be on level thyroxine. They want you to be on that because it's four bucks a month, it's dirt cheap, and in their minds, they don't think there's a difference between the two, even though I just said everybody who takes Armour Thyroid tends to lose weight and feels a lot better. In fact, most people have preference for it. So because of that, it almost always is more expensive. A month supply, probably about 30 bucks, and I'm comparing this to the month supply and the cash price of NP Thyroid, which is about $7. So there is a fairly big difference. It's you know about four times, and if you add this up over the course of a year, we're talking you know three three four hundred bucks, depending on how much your insurance is actually covering, versus you know seven dollars, which is a little bit closer to the price of level thyroxine, which is about four. In fact, some some insurances will just pay. I mean, you don't have to pay anything for level thyroxine, so they they would rather you be on that. But you should be aware, especially if cost is a factor for you. But I will say this, even if cost is a factor for you, if Armour Thyroid is the thing that you're feeling good on, in my opinion, it's worth spending that extra 23 bucks, provided you can afford it. It's worth spending that extra 23 bucks per month instead of using a brand that you don't feel as well on. Because at the end of the day, it's your life and you want to be able to have control over it and you want to have a good quality of life. And if that means spending a little extra money, in my opinion, I think it's worth it. Now you have to make that on a case by case basis, obviously, but if you can, definitely go for it. All right, so number four is it does contain animal products. You should be aware of this. So you know, and I've said it before, that NDT is much more preferred over other formulations of T4 and T, or of other formulations of T4, like level thyroxine and Synthroid. But the, the term uh, natural desiccated thyroid is somewhat confusing. I have a video on that, talking about the difference between natural and synthetic um, thyroid medications, because it says it's, you know, in the name, it's it kind of says natural. So you might be thinking, oh, well, it's, it's human derived, but it isn't. It, it's actually from animals. Now, there's a, a benefit here in the sense that it contains a little bit of extra ingredients, which we'll talk about in a minute. 
Um, but it, it does come from an animal. So if you have dietary restrictions or for religious purposes, you don't like to consume certain animals. This usually comes from pigs, but you can also get it from beef, by the way. So it's porcine derived um, or bovine derived. But if you have dietary restrictions, you should be aware of that. Also, you should be aware of this because uh, the fact that it comes from an animal, it does contain certain enzymes that are found within that animal itself. And so sometimes those, those particles from the from the animal when you consume the medication can trigger your immune system. So you should be aware of that. Now that doesn't happen very often, but I, I just want to, you know, in full disclosure, I have seen it happen a couple times. So that's number four. Number five, it contains both T4 and T3. And so in my opinion, this is probably one of the main reasons why so many people prefer it. There are other things as well. I, I already know what's going to happen. Someone's going to say it also includes T1 and T2. Don't worry. I got you covered somewhere down here. We'll be talking about it next actually. So don't worry. I am aware of that. <laughs> people have said that before, but in my opinion, T4 and T3, which are the, the most biologically active formulations of thyroid hormone in your body. In fact, T3 is about 300 times more biologically active than T4. And the fact that it contains T3, which is the most, the single most important and, and powerful thyroid hormone that, that exists in your body, it contains both of these things. Whereas other medications such as level thyroxine and synthroid only have this T4. So you're missing out on this huge 300 times increase in biological activity if you only use T4 medications like level thyroxine and synthroid, whereas Armour Thyroid and all formulations of NDT, by the way, contain both T4 and T3. The ratio is not as high as you might think. It's 38 micrograms of T4 to nine micrograms of T3 in every single grain. So, you know, obviously if you're on two grains, you're gonna have to double that. Or if you're on a half a grain, you have to cut it in half. But the ratio is, is pretty close. It's about like, I don't know, 77 to 23 or something like that. It's, it's pretty close, but it still is majority of T4 compared to T3. So let's just say it's probably close to 80, 20 or so, because that's an easy way to remember it. Number six, the next one is Armour Thyroid. As I mentioned before, I talked about it up here. It contains more than just T4 and T3, however, because it comes from that animal source we talked about up here. So again, pros and cons with the fact that it comes from an animal. Um, but one of those things is that the way that it's created, and, and to help you understand this, we got to talk about kind of how it's created. And what, what, we, what the pharmaceutical companies do to create this is they take up the thyroid gland, like the whole thyroid gland, usually of pigs, they dry it out, which means they desiccate it, and then they you know, smash it up. And then they, whatever is inside that thyroid gland comes inside of the medication itself. Now, now they do make sure that it contains a specific amount of T4 and T3 in this ratio. So they do double check that, but you're also getting other, uh, thyroid hormones that are found within the thyroid gland. You're getting other hormones such as calcitonin, and you're getting enzymes found within that thyroid gland. Now, in my opinion, this is probably one of the reasons that a lot of people do really well on NDT as well, especially people who don't have a thyroid. Because remember, if you have Hashimoto's, your thyroid's a little bit damaged and destroyed, but still functioning, right? It's still there. Whereas if you've had your thyroid completely removed, you just don't have a thyroid gland anymore. Yeah, I mean, you may have one or 2% of it left because it's impossible to remove all of it, but the majority of it is gone, which means you are missing some of these enzymes and calcitonin and T1 and T2. Because if you have your thyroid removed or destroyed by radioactive iodine, then, and your doctor is only giving you level thyroxine or synthroid, you're missing out on all of these things. So in my opinion, those people who have had their thyroid completely removed or destroyed tend to do better on NDT because it's coming with a lot more than just this T4 and T3. Now that isn't universal. Some people can do okay by just taking T4 after they've had their thyroid removed. Some people do okay with just T4 and T3. Um, but I think that these things, the benefits of the T1 and the T2, which are other thyroid hormones, the calcitonin and the enzymes shouldn't be understated because there is value there. Okay, number seven, um, I mentioned this before, but NDT and Armour Thyroid specifically is preferred over Synthroid and Level Thyroxine in almost every case. So as I said before, there have been studies where they, where they take people because as you can imagine, the makers of Synthroid and Level Thyroxine, they do not want you to use, uh, they don't want you to use Armour Thyroid. So they try to create these studies and they say, you know, well, let's give patients Level Thyroxine, we'll give them Synthroid or we'll give them Level Thyroxine and we'll give them Armour and then we'll flip them before and we'll, we'll blind it so they don't know what they're taking and then we'll see then we'll, we'll be able to finally find out that people prefer our medication. And they actually don't. In fact, most people, when they're switched, even if they don't know what they're taking, they still prefer Armour Thyroid. And again, it probably has to do with all these things that we're talking about. But you should know that because your doctor will try and convince you that Synthroid and Level Thyroxine are better, generally, right? You've probably been to the doctor. They say these medications are terrible. They don't work. You know, they're inconsistent, blah, blah, blah. I know all their talking points. Um, but the point is, p patients, when they take it, prefer it. So you can, you can, you know, try and say that this is true, but when you actually have the evidence in your hand and you look at these studies, you almost always see that people want the NDT. They want the Armour Thyroid. Okay. So that's number seven. Number eight is it is not the name brand. This should be of NP Thyroid. Sorry. So this would be NP. 
So NP thyroid is another formulation of, of um, NDT. And oftentimes what I'll see here, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because pharmaceutical, uh, not, not pharmaceutical, but the pharmacies, when you get a prescription for armor, because the NP thyroid is cheaper, they'll almost always try to switch you. And by the way, they can do this without asking you. They'll just switch you from armor thyroid to NP thyroid. And so they'll just give you the medicine and they might not even tell you that they switched it. And so you're thinking in your head, oh, well, I'm getting armor when in reality you're getting NP. So you need to be very careful about that. I've seen that happen, especially if they don't have armor or if armor is more expensive, the pharmacist may just make this switch. And the only way to, to make sure that this doesn't happen is if your doctor writes your prescription and writes this thing dispense as written, D-A-W. And if they put that dispense as written, then the pharmacy has to give you um, that whatever medication they, they, they wrote on the prescription. In this case, it's Armour Thyroid. So it's not necessarily a problem always if you use NP Thyroid or over Armour, not always, but it could be. Remember, I told you there is a difference between these two things in terms of their inactive ingredients and how you tolerate them. So if you're thinking you're getting one thing, when in reality you're getting another just because they want to save a little bit of money, you may not be feeling as good. So you should be aware of that. It is not the name brand. It is not the name brand of MP Thyroid. They contain different inactive ingredients. Um, number number uh, nine, I'm talking here about switching and converting from T4 to NDT. And what I want you to know is that it isn't always easy to go from level thyroxine or Synthroid to NDT. Now, it doesn't have to be super difficult, but the reason I'm bringing this up is because most doctors do not know how to do it, okay? So they have this generic conversion chart that they use. In fact, I have another video talking about why that conversion chart is, in my opinion, very out of date. In fact, newer studies have proven that that's the case. But the point is, if your doctor is not familiar using Armour Thyroid or NDT, they're almost always going to underdose you as you make the transition from T4 to NDT. So do be aware of that because it is, in my opinion, not acceptable to, to make the switch and then underdose the patient and then say, see, it didn't work. Okay, that happens a lot. You'd be surprised. In fact, there's lots of people out there listening to this who might have experienced that very thing. In fact, if you have, leave the comments, leave your um, experience in the comment below because I want to show other patients that this really does happen. Okay, so not necessarily easy and the conversion is not necessarily, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio because you're switching from T4 to a combo of T4 and T3. So it does change a little bit. Um, and then lastly, what I want you to know here is that Armour Thyroid has a different impact on your thyroid lab test. I don't know if you can see that. You can see it a little bit here. Armour Thyroid has a different impact on your thyroid lab test compared to T4 medications like level thyroxine and Synthroid. And you need to be aware of this because if you're not aware of this, because I almost can promise you that your doctor doesn't know this, so it's kind of going to be up to you to understand this. Armour Thyroid is, has a different impact on these lab tests. So if you're not if you're not aware of that and you get your lab test, you might be like, what is going on? Maybe this isn't working and your doctor will probably say that. They'll say, look at your labs. They're all crazy. And you're, it's like, well, no, no, no. They just have, a, it has a different impact on these labs because it contains all of these different ingredients, the T2, the T1, the T3, the calcitonin, the enzymes, you know, and a different ratio of T4 to T3. It's expected that you're going to have a little bit of change in your lab test. Okay. So I've included some of those here. It tends to have a more dramatic drop or a more dramatic effect on your TSH provided you're using the right dose. So if you were somehow able to get an equivalent dose of T4 and NDT, you would see that that TSH would go down a little bit further because of the T3, which is about three times more potent at reducing TSH compared to T4. So do be aware of that. It tends to drop your TSH a little bit more, it tends to increase your free T3 by a lot more, okay, because it contains that direct T3, okay. So, and then it also can have either a positive effect in the terms of increasing your free T4 or decreasing your free T4. And then again, that depends sort of on this T3. So some people will see that their T4 drops and plummets down, whereas before it, went, it was just fine on the, T, on the T4 only medication. And other people might see that it has no effect, so it might just stay the same. But do be aware of that because these things don't necessarily mean that the medication is not working for you. It may, it may not be the right medicine for you, but you can't count on the fact that these things will give you that information. And if you do, I think, especially if you trust your doctor in this setting, unless they're a doctor that is really good at the thyroid. And I'm not talking about endocrinologists here necessarily. I'm talking about someone who knows this sort of stuff here, right? And so there's not a lot of doctors. I mean, some do, some, some try to actively learn, but this isn't all the doctors out there. Okay, so be aware of that. All right, so these are the 10 things. Now, I want to hear your experience. So if you have been on Armour Thyroid or if you're considering making the switch or the transition to Armour Thyroid, I want to hear, you know, what sort of things are preventing you from making that switch or just what you're thinking in general. So leave that in the comments below. If you enjoyed this sort of information, um, do go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Go click the notification bell as well because we're going to have a lot more videos, especially related to the thyroid. And I think you'll find a lot of help there. And that's all I got for you today, but otherwise I'll see you guys in the next one.